Welcome to CityWise. I'm your host, Tiana Stevens. CityWise is produced by the City of Rochester to shine a spotlight on city living at its best. Well, on April 24th, Mayor Lovely Warren delivered her State of the City address to a standing room only crowd at CGI Communications in downtown Rochester. The theme was reigniting the flame of progress with a focus on working together. When I look at my city, I see neighbors that are empowered to shape the community they believe in. I see people who believe in me and care enough to give me a chance. I see a city that believed in my idea and invested in it. Three years ago, I asked you to believe that our city's future was just as bright as our past, and you did. Our neighborhoods are becoming safer and more vibrant. Our youth have more educational opportunities. And businesses, large and small, are growing, creating more jobs. But our work isn't finished yet. Let's continue to build a dynamic city of ideas, inclusion, and strength. We have to continue working together and hold true to our belief that our future will be as bright as our past. And the State of the City Address covered three and a half years of progress under the mayor's vision of job creation, safer, more vibrant neighborhoods, and better educational opportunities in Rochester. We're honored to welcome Mayor Lovely Warren to the show today. Thanks for coming on today. Thank you for having me, Tiana. So the backdrop for the State of the City, um, Main Street right there yeah. behind you in the windows, it was an intentional choice for the venue. Tell us about why you chose to be there at CGI. Well, because CGI is one of the fastest growing companies here in Rochester, located in downtown Rochester. And we have a number of businesses that are choosing Rochester. Mm -hmm. They could be anywhere in the country for, you know, anywhere in the world, but they are choosing Rochester. And we want to highlight that. We also wanted to highlight all the progress that's happening in downtown Rochester. Um, when you looked across the street, you were right in front of the Hyatt. Right. And, uh, you know, um, Starbucks opened up, as well as a national steakhouse will be opening up in the fall. Mm -hmm. and so we wanted people to see all the progress that we're that that's happening here in Rochester and the fact that we are um, basically moving forward mm -hmm. it was a beautiful building and there's something interesting planned for that exact space actually yes. um, something new for downtown what's that Yes, um, actually, Bob um, Bartosowicz, uh, who is the president and CEO of CGI, is actually put, uh, going to make that space where we were located at into a car museum. Very and cool. so he has a number of antique cars that um, he owns, and he is going to basically make it a, a showcase and a showroom for those vehicles right here in downtown Rochester. Very cool. Uh, and just as downtown is experiencing growth, we're also seeing um, growth in all of Rochester's neighborhoods, Bulls Emma, Beachwood, the public market. Um, mm -hmm. What are some of those um, development items that you highlighted? Well, on Hudson Avenue, we have a, a new development that is being spearheaded by uh, Krista as well as DePaul. Mm -hmm. And it has been over 30 years since we've had a new housing development on Hudson Avenue. Yeah. We also had um, the Firefighters Union um, build a new Firefighters Hall right there on Hudson Avenue as well. Um, when we talk about what's happening in the Emma and Beachwood neighborhood, um, we have another housing development that's being spearheaded by home leasing. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been over 50 years since we've had a new housing development on that side of East Main Street. Mm -hmm. In the Bulls Head area, we are acquiring land and demolishing old buildings, um, old structures that have been around for a number of years um, in hopes that we'll be able to uh, do a new development there that will revitalize that area as well. And in Josana, of course, in the Northwest, um, we just learned recently that we have been awarded from DHCR, New York State uh, Department of Housing Renewal, a new grant that will have the second phase of the Josana Master Plan, which will bring additional single family homes and rentals in that area. Very great news. And along with investments in infrastructure and new development, you often talk about investing in people. What does that mean when you say that? We talk about investing in people, that we can make the exterior of a building look good, but if you mm -hmm. don't deal with the problems or the issues that families are having in our community, then it will all be for naught because we have to help people in order to generate the revitalization that we're looking for. And sure. so when we look at programs like YAMTEP, which is Young Adults 
Manufacturing Training Employment Program, OTR, Operation Transformation, Rochester, Rejob, all of these mm -hmm. programs are meant to really focus on the people and getting them the support that they need to actually get a full-time job, a sustainable living wage job, so that they can take care of themselves and their families. And all of those programs have had success in, in making sure that that happens. And we want to continue to do that because it's truly my belief that the way that we can help children in our city is to make sure that their parent has a good paying living wage job. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit more about those programs that connect people directly to jobs like Vampool. So we started, uh, I have an Office of Innovation and Strategic Initiatives that I talked mm -hmm. about in the state of the city. And this is basically a group of really rock star young professionals that have taken on the issue of poverty mm -hmm. in our community and looked across the country to find ways in which we as a city can help those people that are impoverished working with the Rochester Monroe Anti-Poverty Initiative. And one of the things that we found when we talked to people that are um, living in poverty or have challenges is that they it takes them about uh, an hour and a half each way to get mm -hmm. to work. One right. of the things that we uh, looked at was to do a van pool. We started a van pool which um, is in partnership with v Ride, which allows people to carpool to work together. Okay. It um, is a contract with v Ride that allows six to seven people, depending on the size of the van, to actually, that's going uh, on the same shift to the mm -hmm. same location to ride together at a reduced cost, at, at a reduced time frame that they would have in the traditional market. We were able to also secure state um, funds through um, a, a grant program that will allow us to expand that. We also will this summer be expanding our, our bike share program. And as you know, Uber and Lyft and ride sharing is coming to Rochester very, very soon. Very excited for that. So along with creating jobs and um, connecting people with jobs, um, you've also been supporting the small business community, the job creators. What are some of the programs that you've put in place for that? One of the programs, again, that came out of our Office of Strategic Initiatives is the Kiva program. Mm -hmm. Kiva is a program that really focuses on uh, entrepreneurs that may be in their home or maybe they're selling stuff out of their car mm -hmm. or operating uh, a, a business on a micro level and it really gives them access to capital access to support through a, a crowdfunding source a national okay. uh, an international crowdfunding source which allows them to actually get a loan of up to ten thousand dollars with zero percent interest and um, we've had a number of people that have gone through that program majority of those individuals that have gone through that program have been um, women and uh, people of color. Mm -hmm. uh, we have been able to secure about $160,000 in loans and we have almost 100% repayment rate when it comes down to uh, those individuals repaying paying us back. It's actually not just in our community, uh, when I look at our, our city and in the community as a whole, about creating opportunities for people to be employed for but also we want to be able to create opportunities for people to become employers. Excellent. Um, early in your State of the City address you mentioned you said that a mayor must be present in the city mm -hmm. and you've created a lot of opportunities for people to engage with you. Um, clergy on patrol, coffee with the mayor. Um, tell us a little bit about those uh, endeavors. Well clergy on patrol is in partnership with our clergy and you know anyone from all walks of life that you know want to volunteer and come out especially in the summertime when we have a lot of activity that um, and some of it activity that we nest we don't necessarily want mm -hmm. it's a way for us to connect our community with resources with services also it's a way for our clergy to be able to talk to people and engage with them with our police department our clergy have a different relationship with people in the right. community than our police department and we want to be able to bridge that gap we want to be able to uh, make sure that everyone knows that we're all in this together mm -hmm. working together we can really transform and change our city and that's what clergy on patrol is about mm -hmm. when we talk about coffee with the mayor it's really going into the neighborhood into neighborhood coffee shops uh, last month we were at equal grounds mm -hmm. and at a great time you know in the south wedge just me meeting people talking to people sure. um, having the neighborhood uh, you know residents and leaders be able to come and talk directly to the mayor one-on-one -on -one is something that I enjoy mm -hmm. being able to have those discussions um, 
um, dealing with any concerns or issues that they may have that we need to follow up with and trying to help our our, our citizens one-on-one -on -one is something that um, I truly appreciate we also have an office of constituent services that's mm -hmm. right outside of my office that deal with our constituents issues and we want them to know that this is their city this is their city hall mm -hmm. one of the things that we also really focused on is opening up City Hall. We have right. a number of events at City Hall from having Santa Claus there to also having job fairs and other sure. programs right there at City Hall in the atrium. Mm -hmm. and, and finally on education, um, a lot of gains in pre-K enrollment and really exciting news along those lines. Yes, when we talk about pre-K enrollment, uh, two and a half, three years ago, um, my three to three initiative really focused on how do we improve um, educational outcomes for our children mm -hmm. and we had to start somewhere right. so we started with working with the, the advocates that are here in Rochester that are doing great work and um, advocated for additional funding for pre-k we've been able to increase pre-k enrollment in the city of Rochester by 1200 percent that's 1200 wow. percent and so we have a number of pre-k 3 and pre-k 4 students that are enrolled now um, it's a matter of you know scaling up and getting as mm -hmm. many children and enrolled in this program as possible. We also at uh, the mayor's first beacon school, school number right. 17, which is a community school model, we've seen significant reductions in suspensions and um, referrals out because of the support and the wraparound services we've been able to provide there as a community with the help of the Farish Foundation as well as Rock the Future. We've also launched um, Ready Rosie, mm -hmm. which is a um, which is a video program that you know helps parents and um, work with their children right. and that's a great program that comes we're right excited about yeah. uh, comes right to your phone and uh, gives parents the tools right there on their phone to work with their children so we're really focusing on our youngest but we also know that our, our, our older children need support as well that's why we do programs like summer of opportunity you you the mayor's youth advisory council mm -hmm. just really trying to make sure that we are being a resource and a support to all that are in our community no no matter the age, no matter where they're from, and no matter where they live. Wonderful. To read the mayor's State of the City address or watch the full address, you can visit cityofrochester.gov slash SOTC2017. And for more information on any of the city programs or mayor's initiatives discussed today, you can visit cityofrochester.gov or call 311.